if you watch any of my draft coverage for 2021, it's no secret how much I like the Dolphins draft. Love Jalen Phillips and Javon Holland, and of course, no one more than Jalen Waddle. It's been no secret. It's well documented over the past couple of years on Twitter and YouTube. I love Jalen Waddle, and I think he was the best receiver in the class, and that's actually represented in Madden. He's the highest rated receiver, and he has a really, really good development trait. So this Miami Dolphins rebuild should be a lot of fun. We get to use a lot of really, really good players. We get to decide what to do with Xavier and Howard, if anything. I think we're going to work something out long term. Spoiler alert, but let's go ahead and go over the team. Get into this rebuild. If you guys like videos like this, make sure you're subscribed. And let's talk about this roster. So one of the biggest things I actually didn't talk about is what we're going to do with Tua Tungavailoa. I would like him to be the franchise guy. I think he has that potential. In game, 23 years old, star development, 73 overall. We can definitely work with that. Two is pretty good. Doesn't have the biggest cannon in the world, but it's not bad. Pretty good athletically overall. Decent accuracy. That star development makes him viable. So hopefully Tua has a great year, you know, with a pretty good receiving core of Will Fuller and Devontae Parker and, of course, Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell looks unbelievable. 97 speed, great acceleration, 94 change of direction as well. Great deep route running, good spectacular catch and catch in traffic. Waddle's a really underrated actual receiver. I think everyone gets caught up in the speed and they go, oh, well, he must be only speed. But again, certainly if you've watched any of my draft content over the past year, you know that's certainly not true with him. He can do it all. And that, again, is pretty well represented here. Hopefully he develops and is our guy. I'm going to play him as much as possible year one. Miles Gaskin as star dev. I mean, some of these other receivers, like, you know, I love Preston Williams. Albert Wilson in here as well. Jakeem Grant, more of a returner, really. I think we're going to need to upgrade running back at some point. That's for sure. And the offensive line has potential. I think the way I want to set it up, Robert Hunt can stay at right guard. He has tackle experience too. But I think ideally he's a guard. Solomon Kidley is going to start at left guard. Kindley's actually pretty decent. Austin Jackson, eh, not so much, but they did give him star dev. I think Liam Eichenberg, who played left tackle at Notre Dame, is going to play right tackle for me here. I think that makes the most sense, unless I want to move Robert Hunt back to tackle. But I kind of don't. I want Eichenberg to play right tackle, at least for now. And then we can have Matt Skira play center. It isn't the best, but this is a better way to get our best players in here. And why did they change it? I don't want Jesse Davis starting. I don't. All right, offensive line setup. Mike Kosicki's pretty great. Gotta love Mike Kosicki. Super freak athlete tight end. Gotta love him. He also looks so much like the YouTuber Mazematic in the game. It's insane. And then Adam Shaheen, Hunter Long was actually picked pretty high. I want to say the top of the third round. Yeah, third round, pick number 18 in that round. And then on defense, there is a lot to work with here as well. Here's what's going to happen, right? Benardrick McKinney or Andrew Van Ginkel are going to move to inside linebacker. Love Jerome Baker there. He should honestly have star over AVG, if I'm honest. He's going to stay at inside linebacker for sure. Jalen Phillips will start right away. What I should do, because it works so much better in simulation, is change to a 4-3. And then we can have Jalen Phillips playing defensive end, Emmanuel Agba playing defensive end. And then we would have Jerome Baker, Bernardrick McKinney, and Andrew Van Ginkel as their off-ball linebackers. Christian Wilkins up the middle as well. Um, Justin Coleman. I mean, the cornerback group is interesting. Xavier Howard we're going to rock with. Byron Jones, obviously great as well. Justin Coleman is a fine slot for right now. He is 28. He's going to start to regress, so we have to think about his replacement. I'm actually kind of shocked that Nick Needham has star dev decent young player like nothing crazy but a little bit surprised i feel like a lot more players have star dev though this year which is a good thing i think because it's the second worst one like normal is the worst dev trait you can have formerly was slow i'm looking for noah igbenogany he's just not showing up right now i guess he's under 74 overall with craven leblanc but uh with the safeties we have eric rowe jason mccordy i guess plays safety now but he doesn't because javon holland is going to start over him 100%. Another star dev player, I imagine. Jalen Phillips is going to have star dev too. But I have to decide how I want to set up the defense. So I'm trying to consider what trades, if any, I'd like to make for season one. 
I'm kind of content with where the team is. I just want to see some of these guys develop. Devontae Parker probably should be at age 28. Going to regress, but I think I'm just going to keep him there for right now. And then defensively, there's not really a whole ton of value. I don't think anyone's going to be interested in Jason McCourty. Justin Coleman might be the only guy I trade. Trading Justin Coleman a fourth and a fifth for a second from the Eagles. I think that's a fair trade. Justin Coleman just wasn't really in the long-term future of this team. 28 years old is the age of regression, if you weren't aware, for like non-superstar and superstar X-Factor players in Madden. So it makes sense to move on. And with guys like Noah Igbenogany in behind, who we talked about, Star Dev, I want him playing. And Justin Coleman was just kind of blocking him. So Igbenogany is actually going to play over Nick Needham. But we've got a decent group of four there. And I like the team. This is how it's set up. You've seen the offense. Again, I'm gonna just I'll keep Devontae Parker for now. It's a bad idea, probably. But I will have Craven LeBlanc is not gonna be my slot. That's not gonna happen. But Jalen Phillips and Agba on the end. Jerome Baker, Bernardrick McKinney up the middle. Javon Holland, don't worry about him. And I guess Jason McCord. No, I'm no, I'm gonna play Igbenogany there. I'll look for Trade partners for Jason McCourty. I guarantee you he is not even yellow interest from any team, which means I'm just going to keep him. And the only way I'll trade a guy like Devontae Parker right now is if he's going into the final year of his deal. Well, I saw that Will Fuller is actually, which is definitely not good. Devontae Parker's here for three years. He's going to play out that contract. But Will Fuller going into the final year of his deal. Yeah, we're just going to be... I don't know, because he's going to want a three or four year extension worth probably upwards of 10 million per year, which he won't be worth it. So I don't even know if we're going to be able to keep him, but we'll hold on to him anyway. I don't want to go too crazy with trades year one. There's a lot of great depth on this team. Like, where is he? Yeah. Brandon Jones. That's Byron Jones. Brandon Jones. There he is. Was great at Texas and then actually got a chance to play a decent bit with the Dolphins last year. And was a pretty good rookie. I don't think he's going to have star dev. I didn't see it, so it's probably normal. But he's good. Like, he deserves star as much as Nick Needham does. But we'll simulate to the midseason mark and get into this rebuild. It really starts at the offseason. But this is a team that could actually be super competitive. So I'm going to be interested to see what the record is here in a few weeks. Three and four. Currently third in the division. Patriots leading the way. Bills at three and three. That's all right. Didn't expect huge things out of the team this year. I think, you know, we will long-term. We'll see something. But right now, eh, not that great. Nick Needham's actually a free agent, as is Preston Williams. Ooh, definitely some tough decisions already, especially with Will Fuller and Emmanuel Agba at both 27 years old. I'd like to bring them back for three years, maybe? Not four. And, I mean, Will Fuller, the contract is exactly what I thought he'd be asking for. It's just a lot of money, but he, he wants a bigger contract. He wants that long-term security that I just don't think I'm going to be able to offer. And Agba doesn't even want that much and only wanted a two-year deal. I'll give him the security of three years and we'll keep him. McKinney wants four years. It's just probably not going to happen. I'll give you three years. It's a big contract, but we were able to raise the money and get him to sign for you know, a, a less or uh, a shorter contract than he would have otherwise wanted. And then Gesicki I want for probably even six years, to be honest. A big, big contract. But Mike Gesicki is worth it, and he resigns. And that's kind of all I'm worried about right now. Preston Williams and Nick Needham actually should be signed as well. But other than that, there's not a lot here. Six-year contract for Nick Needham. He's only 24. He's really, really cheap. And I'm going to give him a super long contract to keep him at that super low approximate value per year, average value per year. I just think that he's going to be near an 80 plus within like three or four years. So it's certainly worth it. Preston Williams wants more money. I don't know if I'm going to give it to you though. We did not make the playoffs. Went 6-11. and 11. Again, that's fine for year one. We're in a rebuilding phase. It's not like... And I, don't get me wrong. I know what the Dolphins did last year. They were pretty good. But in this video, it's a rebuild, dude. So we're, we're, we are where we are. Tua, decent year two. 
nothing crazy, 4,300 yards, 29 TDs, 15 picks. You'll take it. Would love him to cut down on the turnovers a little bit, add a couple more touchdowns in there, but rushing, didn't really have a rushing attack to lean on. Miles Gaskin averaging three yards per carry is not good. And then Jalen Waddell, only 948 yards and three touchdowns. Not exactly what I expected from the rookie, but as you can see, superstar development. Love that from Jalen Waddell. And then Gesicki over 1,000 yards, eight TDs. Will Fuller actually led in yards, uh, although not touchdowns. 1,100, almost 1,200 yards. Devontae Parker almost wasn't even on the team. Jerome Baker led in tackles with 126 for loss. 22 tackles for loss for Raquan Davis. Also had three sacks. Emmanuel Agba led in sacks with 12 and a half. Had double second place with Christian Wilkins at six. McKinney had four. Jalen Phillips did nothing, two and a half. And then interceptions, McKinney with three. Xavier Howard with three. So if you watch my 20-year rebuild of the Giants, should be a big video. If that isn't out yet, well, that's a thing. So be on the lookout for that. If it's already been uploaded and you haven't seen it, go watch it. But we discovered something, something big, right? Where if you have 4-3 personnel and are in a good 3-4 playbook, your defense actually plays really well anyway. So I might try that here, and that's going to involve moving guys like Christian Wilkins over to D-tackle. We'll keep Raekwon Davis there, and then move Jalen Phillips, who does have star dev, down to right end. And then we'll have Agba and Jalen Phillips as actual defensive ends. We can have these pass-rushing outside linebackers still play outside linebacker. So... If that makes sense to you, you're fine. If it doesn't, you'll understand it as we go through this over the next couple seasons. But Van Ginkel, he as a hybrid kind of put pass rush first outside linebacker can still do that. But Jalen Phillips, who is certainly not a 3-4 defensive end, can still play 3-4 defensive end because based on specialists, that's really not going to be his primary role. He'll still be rushing off the end. So again, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But we are going to start the process of that transition. Christian Wilkins moves to D-tackle. Again, I'm going to move Jalen Phillips down. And not much else is really going to change. 2021 season recap. The Browns beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl 38-10. Christian McCaffrey, as he always seems to, won MVP. Oh my goodness, the Panthers, the Panthers had a crazy year. Christian McCaffrey, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. Brian Burns, Defensive Player of the Year. Big stuff. Najee Harris wins Offensive Player of the Year. Quiddy Pay wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Excuse me, Najee Harris, Rookie of the Year, not Player. As we'll advance to the offseason finally. So there's Wolf Fuller. Preston Williams, Shaquem Griffin. I'm not going to bring him back. So look how much money Will Fuller is saying no to. Gave him a little bit more and he finally ends up accepting. Three years is fine. I just know we're going to watch him regress. I don't really want to watch him regress while paying him big money. That's my big thing there. So a three-year contract isn't the worst. We'll look into finding his replacement. And in free agency, I'm not sure how active I'm going to be year one. There are definitely some good players here. J.K. Scott rejects. <laughs> what do you mean? No one was offering for him. He's a punter. And he just says, nah. Did he sign somewhere? Sign with the Titans. Okay. Well, you know what? We can get a better haircut with Jamie Gillen anyway. Arkansas at Pine Bluff. That's where Teron Armstead went. Not exactly a powerhouse, but Jamie Gillen wants to sign in with that beautiful, beautiful mullet. I'm in. And we got Jamie Gillen. That's going to be the turning point. Right there, everyone, make a mental note. The moment we sign the mullet is the moment this franchise really started turning around. We're going to kill it next year, 100%. Pick a number six overall. And I'm not afraid to navigate the board a little bit, depending on who's here. Ooh, that's a sick corner. I don't need it. I got to convince myself I don't need him. But what if I move someone to safety? Byron Jones has safety experience at UConn. <laughs> uh, you know what? I might talk myself into Bobby Jackson just because he's so, so good. Ran 4-3-1. Has amazing top skills. It just might have to happen. This quarterback, by the way, looks unreal as well. But don't really want to take a quarterback this year. 
It's a pretty good draft class. Bobby Jackson definitely looks really good. There's another player down the board a little bit. Greg Birch out of Oklahoma looks really, really good as well. And even David Weston, 6'5", 272, ran really well. A power moves, definitely a good player there. Luke Griffith, if I want an off-the-ball linebacker, another player that looks really, really good. So I'm kind of in a tough spot with how the board is. It's, I guess, a good problem to have because there's a lot of good players in this class from what I can tell. But do we move up and go after the quarterback or the cornerback, excuse me, in Bobby Jackson? Or do I trade back and try to maybe get both Greg Birch and Luke Griffith? Or go a completely different direction entirely. It's, things are in play. Like I can picture a lot of you guys sitting there being like, you don't need a corner. Don't take the cornerback. Don't move up for him. But here's the thing. Byron Jones could make a seamless transition to safety. He would be excellent back there. And he could stick in that position for a really long time. He's 29, getting older. Eric Rowe is not it. At safety. He's just not. He's just not. Byron Jones would be so much better back there. And then if we get like a 78 to 80 overall corner that we can start right away, that's a significant upgrade over Noah Igbenogany and Nick Needham. So this would be a huge, huge move. I can get rid of Eric Rowe. On the other hand, we're just going to call this guy Sam, I think, for obvious reasons. He's not good enough to start. He's not. And I'm not moving McKinney back over there because it's the whole 4-3, 3-4 hybrid. So I just need another outside linebacker. Bobby Jackson's still available at the second pick. It's worth trying to move up with the Jets. Really big draft day trade on my Kevin Costner. But I get that it's with the division rival. I get that. Makes sense for both teams, though. We are trading number six overall to move up to number two overall. We are trading... A first-round pick next year. We do have another one, but that's our first-round pick. I think we own that. The other pick is from the Texans still. And then we're acquiring number 12 overall this year. And that's the Seahawks pick, I think, from the Jets in the Jamal Adams trade. And Eric Rowe is also heading over to the Jets in the move. We just don't need Eric Rowe anymore. Definitely a good player, but we didn't need him. Zach Lennon appeared to be pretty good, but... This cornerback is going to give us a lot of flexibility. Bobby Jackson looks amazing. Great man, great speed, great zone. Let's take him. 80 overall, the best player in the class. We made the right move. Keeping him local-ish. Florida Atlantic, down in Miami. Pretty local. 94 speed, 82 man, 78 zone. I always love the storyline of keeping like guys local. FAU is like... 40 minutes maybe north of actual Miami and like always drafting guys from the U is really cool and uh none such players in this class but I am gonna try and go after that Oklahoma guy we pick at number 12 he's got a super Oklahoma name just like boring bland basic no offense if your name is whatever his is like Greg Birch or something like that hold on where's my draft board what is his name Luke Griffith, that's another Oklahoma name, but this guy went to LSU. Yeah, Greg Birch. I think that's the guy, though. Griffith looks really good, too. I'm just not sure there's a way I can get both of these guys. And then there are a couple good running backs down the board. Could try and upgrade over Miles Gaskin, if that's even possible. But we pick at number 12. Both players should be available. Luke Griffith, I guess, could surprise me and go a little bit earlier. But Greg Burt should be there 100%. We'll have to see who's available at number 12. And that includes, let's see here. Joshua Whitley out of Penn State looks pretty solid as well. I would say he's probably ranked like 10th in the class maybe. So pretty good for a mid-rounder. Both are still available. But is there any way we can facilitate a trade down? I don't think so. Another really interesting trade. We're moving down from 12 to 16, and we're moving up from 50 to 33 with the Lions. Just kind of a swap of picks like that, swapping firsts and swapping seconds to move up. I think it makes a lot of sense for us. We're going to move down a little bit. And now the reason I'm doing that is if Luke Griffith is still available, the off-the-ball linebacker, 
I'm going to try and take him at this spot. Oh, he's gone. So that makes this even easier. I was going to try and take him and then move back up for Greg Birch. But I'm not super mad about it. He probably went like the pick before, honestly. No, that was a corner. Mark Odell. Let's take Greg Birch. Looks really good. Welcome to the team, Greg. 78 overall, ranked number six in the class. Star or better development. 83 speed, 82 finesse moves, 82 tackle. So he's going to start at left outside linebacker right away. And I think eventually when Emmanuel Agba starts to regress, Greg Birch is going to come in and be our new Emmanuel Agba. Oklahoma to Oklahoma State replacement. I was Oklahoma State, right? I think like almost 100%. I'll check, but I'm almost certain. Oklahoma State for Emmanuel Agba. So we have our new safety in... Byron Jones over Brandon Jones. We have our new left outside linebacker. And then we have an upgraded corner. Things worked out exactly how I wanted them to. So Byron Jones makes the move to safety. What else can we do in the draft? It's really just maybe taking a running back over Miles Gaskin. Don't really love the receiver class. Devontae Parker's down to an 82. We could go O-line. But I kind of like that these guys are developing here. Like maybe we could get... A center over Jesse Davis. Top of the second round. We have two picks around here. First and seventh in this round. And there are at least... I mean, okay, there's at least one running back available in Byron Godwin, which is like... <laughs> it's like you you don't have great eyesight. You're trying to read Brian Goodwin. You're like, ah, it's close enough. He looks okay. Early first round running back. He's going to be... At least like a 77 overall, probably. So I feel like that's probably the pick, right? Jamison Richard, not the worst, but I would rather trade my pick for a first rounder next year if I can do that than take him there. Chad Hart is a late first rounder available still. Not in love with that. I think we're going to take the running back here. Welcome to the team, Byron Godwin. 78 overall, rank number five, star or better development. Do we start him over Miles Gaskin right away? He's the aggressive catch trait with 58 catching. Interesting. I don't know. He's definitely not the most agile guy. He's okay. So here's our choice at number seven. Do we take Chad Hart? Number seven in the second round, obviously. Do we take Chad Hart, team him up with his Oklahoma teammate, or do we go a different direction and try to trade this pick for like a first next year somehow? I'm just going to take Chad Hart. 74 overall, star, better development. It was the right call. Number 23 in the class, took me 39, and that star, better dev is great. Probably going to be star, but that's still good. 90 strength, 64 speed. You know what we could do? And he's pretty big, but we could start him at center. We could do that. But that's going to do it for the draft. Really happy with our draft. Really happy with it. Now, are these guys all probably just star dev? Yeah. But that's not too bad. There were two 80 overall players. Bryson Teague was the other one. And he just went a little bit too early. He went in the back end of the first. I was going to wait until the second to take uh, the running back. Obviously, that's what we did. First pick in the second round in Byron Godwin. But getting Bryson Teague would have been slightly better. Dominique Wilkins? He's no longer... A high-flying human highlight reel playing basketball. Of course, the great Atlanta Hawk legend, Dominique Wilkins. He now plays safety for the Bengals. Unreal. A little smaller than I remember at 5'10". But you know what? Hats off to him for trying to do you know, something different. David Weston we talked about. Definitely pretty good. Playing up to an 80, but he's a 79 overall. Star or better development. 89 power moves. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. But I think we did very, very well. Luke Griffith, normal dev. We dodged a bullet. He looks really good, though. I would I would not be upset at having that player on the team. CPU wants Greg Birch to start at rush end right away over Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips was so good at Miami. Only got 78 finesse moves, though. But how is he going to develop? Ah, well, you know what? We'll have Greg Birch do that. You convinced me. <laughs> Agba, Wilkins. I need uh, I need Raekwon Davis as my second rush D tackle. Slot corner. 
is still going to be Noah Igbenogany. I don't want Xavier Howard in there. Jalen Waddle is my slot receiver. Byron Godwin. I really want to say Brian Goodwin so badly, especially because I'm in, still in baseball mode a little bit. Brian Goodwin, baseball outfielder. But overall, the team definitely, definitely looking pretty good. The only thing I'm going to do is change Raquan Davis to my second rush D tackle. And that's it. This is the team. I'll see you at the midseason mark. We'll check in, see how we're doing. Also, it's funny. I was just checking Twitter. And of course, someone tweets at me, Waddle Fins Rebuild, as I'm recording it. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, at Bengali YouTube. And of course, watch out for sarcasm. Although, link is in the description. Twitter.com slash Bengali YouTube. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you can use code Bengal on SeatGeek to save yourself $20. When you buy tickets for anything, use code Bengal on SeatGeek. Two and five at the midseason mark. Not exactly crushing it. Ian Book and those Saints, man. Every time. Every time. Although we should be able to see some of our dev traits. Show me something above star. We don't know Byron Godwin yet. How is that even possible? He's our starting running back. He should be playing a lot of snaps. Hart has star. Not a big shock there. Oh, well worth it on defense. Bobby Jackson's got superstar X Factor. As a rookie. Again, we made the right move. Let's do... I don't know. Shutdown? Birch does only have star, but star's still pretty good. And we got a superstar X Factor. I don't care. All right, blue light glasses coming on. I live such a dangerous life that the biggest thing that can harm me on a day-to-day -day basis is a specific color of light. That's my fun and exciting in life. But Miles Gaskin, no real interest in him or Adam Shaheen or Jesse Davis. Andrew Van Ginkle is a probably not for me. He's not that expensive, but he's also not that good. I would give Andrew Van Ginkle a two-year deal, I think, just to have somebody there. And he'll probably, he's not gonna sign. He's not gonna sign. What I was gonna say, is that he's probably just going to be a stopgap and not even a starter after like a year or two. But uh, I don't know what to do about that. Christian Wilkins, absolutely want him back long term. We're going to give him a five-year deal. And we'll up the money on that a little bit as well. 43.3 over five. We would not make the playoffs. 6-11 and 11 again, that's the dream. Just go 6-11 and 11 every year. Now, I will say, Tua looked pretty good. Tua looked pretty good. 5,000 passing yards, and 69, by the way, nice. 39 passing touchdowns, 11 picks. Rushing, man, Byron Godwin was really bad. What's his depth rate? Oh my god, it's Superstar X Factor. Okay, yeah, we made the right decision at running back. Byron Godwin has Superstar X Factor. I just really didn't expect that. Um, that's crazy. I mean, I'm not complaining. I just, I really didn't expect that. Um... Yeah, well, he's going to be really good eventually. We are making the right decision by not bringing back Miles Gaskin. And then receiving, Jalen Waddle had quite a year. About 1,700 yards. And 14 touchdowns for him. Mike Kosicki was great. Will Fuller was actually okay. Devontae Parker was a decent third receiver. But I guess a fourth receiving option on our team. Even Byron Godwin got involved as a receiver. Defensively, Jerome Baker had 138 tackles, six for loss, two sacks, two picks. Christian Wilkins had 19 tackles for loss. Not getting a ton of pressure on the QB. Ogbo with seven and a half sacks, seven and a half for Greg Birch. And two picks for Jerome Baker, Noah Igbenogany. Bobby Jackson and Xavier Howard led the way. So the Chiefs beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. The big thing for us right now, as Patrick Mahomes won Super Bowl MVP, Zeke won NFL MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Daniil Hunter, Defensive Player of the Year. And then the Colts' new quarterback, Doug Madsen, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And then the Lions, Luke Griffith, won Defensive Rookie of the Year. So our offense was interesting. We passed for so many yards per game, but we really didn't have that great of an offense. And no rushing game. And then our defense was really, really bad. Hmm. Still trying to figure that out. Greg Birch gets an upgrade here. Still's only a star dev. One defensive rookie of the year. Well, okay, he didn't, but all right. 
I'm not complaining. That's extra XP for no reason. Yeah, ABG is gone. Gaskin's gone. And we need to figure this out. Because we can't have Tua throw for 5,000 yards and just be terrible. Oh, Jalen Waddle, Superstar X Factor. That's nice. He got upgraded. Love to see that. Did anyone else get upgraded? Jalen Waddle, the Superstar X Factor, is big. He's going to be... He's going to be a 99 overall probably by the end of this, I would say. And uh, we'll keep him at these abilities. Tua is up to superstar dev. That's really good. Already up to an 82 overall. Some of that's with morale. I think he's like a 79 if you take off the three. So not terrible. Ooh, and Jerome Baker up to star. That's a really nice change. Whole defense is actually looking really good right now. I got Dante Hightower. Kind of a weird one, but I was trying to think about what do we actually need and what can we actually get. I like my offensive line. It doesn't look amazing, but these guys are getting better. So it's not going to be like this the entire way. I like my receivers, kind of, but I wasn't going to sign anyone in free agency. Could go after Tyreek Hill, or I could have, but I decided against that. We have a good running back for the future. And then defensively, we were really just kind of missing a linebacker to play right as a linebacker. And I feel like Dante Hightower, even though he's just a Band-Aid, should be fine at outside linebacker for at least this season. He's on a one-year deal. It's nothing crazy. And I, we don't need a safety. We don't need a cornerback. We don't really need D-line. We're just waiting for these guys to develop. Now, we do have to replace Agba, but we have Greg Birch. And then to replace Greg Birch, I'll probably just draft a linebacker. Then Archer McKinney's getting old too. He's regressing. He's blowing 80 now at 30. So he has to be replaced. So in the draft, we are thinking linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. Doesn't matter if it's an off the ball linebacker or not. We're getting a linebacker or two. All right, we're picking at number seven overall. And who do we trade our pick to? Who do we trade our other first rounder to? This is not our first round pick. Was it the Lions? It might have been the Lions. Another interesting decision based on the draft board. Marcus Bolden's going to go number two overall. Stud receiver. Really, really good. 6'4". 22 years old out of Georgia. Ran 4'4 flat. Real strong. Really good top skills. Going to be good. Could be a great combo with Jalen Waddell. Because let's be real, Devontae Parker and Will Fuller are not sticking around long term. But we have the seventh pick. We would have to move up. And it worked out last time. Worked out really well. However, Casey Parson, another Georgia player, a little bit older, really good linebacker. Could see him replacing Dante Hightower in a year really easily. And then Alex Ingram out of Ohio. Not Ohio State, Ohio. Where, uh, who's an Ohio player? Terrell Basham. Terrell Basham might be Ohio, but 6'1", 265, built pretty sturdy. He's got B-plus finesse moves, ran 4'5'4", four, four, ran pretty well. I feel like he fits less. It's really down to Casey Parson, I think, or Marcus Bolden. There's also a player I like in the third round, Lewis Waters. Really good center. Might end up drafting him. So maybe I trade up from my second pick in the draft and a second next year somehow and get Casey Parson. I don't know. It's going to be tough. Ideally, I would get both of these guys. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. This was the only way this was happening. We're moving up to number two overall, but with a first next year. We're trading a three and a five this year to move up to number two. The Lions think we're going to be pretty bad again. Hopefully that's not the case. But we're investing heavily right now in a stud player on offense and hopefully a stud player on defense in Casey Parson. At number two, we're going Marcus Bolden out of Georgia. Welcome to the team. 80 overall, number one in the class. Wearing number one. Took him at number two. Had to make a move up. 93 speed, 83 short route running, 80 medium, 
79 deep, 87 catching traffic, great spectacular catch and catching, accelerations crazy, change of direction, freak athlete who's really good technically as well. Really good with the football in his hands, surprisingly. Marcus Bolden, not to be confused, by the way, with Marcus Bolden. Also, I'm seeing from basketball reference that it's actually pronounced Marquise Bolden for the, uh, the Cavs center. Okay, sure. We'll simulate to number seven, see if that linebacker's still there. There goes J.P. Ingram. Chargers get a quarterback. Okay. That feels like not a great decision. And we're going to take this middle linebacker, keeping the Georgia boys together. Casey Parson, welcome to the team. 78 overall, the number two player in the draft. Star, star or better development. 89 speed, 88 tackle. Pursuit's pretty good, too. Yeah, he looks like a beast. Could take another Georgia player. He looks pretty good, actually, but don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to stick to the original game plan and take Lewis Waters out of Oregon, going from the far southeast to the far south or far northwest. Opposite ends of the spectrum there. Actually, this might be inverted, so we look like that on a map. But Lewis Waters out of Oregon. 77 overall, the number three player in the class. <laughs> He's got one, two, three in the draft. Only normal dev, unfortunately. Great run block. He's really well-rounded. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with him just yet. I think what ends up happening is Robert Hunt moves back to tackle. And then Liam Eikenberg just comes out of the rotation because he's a worse normal development player. Am I right about that? I think so. Big trade here. Trading a four, a three, and a two next year the three and the two come next year for a one next year from the bucks they're projected to be pretty good so that first round's not quite as valuable hopefully we just get lucky and they're terrible and we're really good so it doesn't end up mattering we traded our first round pick to detroit and it really worked out that receiver is more than worth it but i wanted to get some type of a first round pick next year we're trading a lot to get it but i think it's going to be worth it you really couldn't have done much better than we did in the draft we got the first player we got the second player and then there were a couple, or actually, yeah, only two players at 77 overall. BJ Starks was also a really good receiver. I don't think on the same level of, uh, as ours. He's just faster, really. And then there were uh, a few 76s in there. Alex Ingram looked pretty good. Only 79 finesse moves, though, but 88 speed. This is the team for season number three. We have Bolden as our third receiver. He's also going to be playing in the slot. So we have the specialists are going to shape up. I'm trying Emmanuel Agba at rush D tackle to get Birch and Phillips on the field on the edge at the same time. Also, Raekwon Davis, as good as he is generally as a run-stuffing defensive tackle, really not great at applying any type of pressure. So I think Agba at 275 pounds will be fine as a rush D tackle. Got Parson in there as well. Bolden, as you can see, is our slot. And then defensively, this is how things are shaping up. I actually like it a lot. It's tough to find a hole with this team. We're just still waiting on some of these guys to develop a little bit. And then offensively, I decided to go Waters at right tackle. I don't want to move Hunt to right tackle and then pay him like a tackle when his contract is expiring, which is this season, I believe. So I'm going to just wait on that. Waters goes up one overall to right tackle. So I'm pretty happy with that. Devontae Parker or Will Fuller probably should be traded this season. If we go into team salaries here... And I did this in season one, too. Uh, and we looked at these. Devontae Parker had three years left. Will Fuller still has two years remaining. But Devontae Parker really just doesn't have a place on the team anymore. He's 30. He's already regressed down two overall. It's going to be even worse. We're not going to keep him long term. He's not going to play too much this year. We're doing a disservice by keeping him around. Not the best trade in the world for us. Devontae Parker, Bernardrick McKinney, two vets who are regressing. I mean, McKinney's down to a 76 overall. I'm trading a future third to get a current second. They're really just, there's no value in those two players. There really wasn't. It was barely any. No one wanted them. I thought that Devontae Parker would have maybe a little bit of interest, but no. No one really wanted him. Four and two at the midseason mark. Definitely a lot better than where we've been. Currently in the division lead, four and two. Patriots three and four. Bills also three and four players with expiring contracts at the end of the year are 
no longer Devontae Parker, but Dante Hightower, Tua, Raquan Davis, Robert Hunt, Noah Igbenogany, Solomon Kinley, Brandon Jones, Austin Jackson. The Dolphins had a lot of picks in, what was it, 2020? And all of those guys are free agents now, or will be. So I want to bring back Jackson, Lynn Bowden Jr. in there too. We didn't really talk about him. Could be a cool player in real life, just not going to feature in this rebuild. But I want to bring back Austin Jackson. Brandon Jones, who cares about, honestly, in this. It, he's a 74 overall, normal depth, 25 years old. There's just really not a point. Even though I, I want to keep him, you know, Texas, but I guess he's cheap enough where it kind of makes sense if he wants to sign for a little less. All right, Brandon Jones is good depth. And then we have Solomon Kinley, Noah Igbenogany, Robert Hunt, and Raekwon Davis. Two is going to get a huge contract. I don't think Dante Hightower is coming back. Five-year deal for Tua. Welcome back. Yep, Tua is back. It's Tua time. Austin Jackson's back, and so is Solomon Kinley and Noah Igbenogany, Raekwon Davis, and of course Tua. Dante Hightower is 33. Robert Hunt wants more money. I can only imagine if he was a tackle how much money he'd be asking for. And Robert Hunt is back long term. Had to boost that up a little bit, but not too much. And we're going to check out these rookie dev traits. Show me at least superstar for this receiver. Please. Ooh, we don't know it yet. Superstar, I, I think he's going to be. Just the number one overall player in the draft. I guess there's a chance he's not. And then defensively, that linebacker we should know. Only star. Not the worst, obviously, but it was the worst of the hidden developments. Hopefully, Bolden is slightly better, at least. It's just a little bit buried on the depth chart right now. Even as a slot receiver, he's not playing over Jalen Waddell. And you know what? He's going to play over Will Fuller, though. 11-6 and six won the AFC East by a lot. So we flip our record from the previous two seasons, and Phil Simms has another son. This one may be slightly more tolerable uh, on Twitter and Gary Sims. I couldn't even say tolerable. What do I know? But stats and awards here. We see that Tua threw for 48, almost 4,900 yards, 38 touchdowns to 12 picks. Pretty good year, I'd say. Byron Godwin still struggling a little bit, 869 yards, eight touchdowns, but only averaging three and a half per carry. He's up to an 88 overall, though. As soon as I change his number to not something in the freaking 40s, I bet he's going to be a beast. <laughs> like that matters, but it is ugly to look at. Going with number 21 for next season. Marcus Bolden as a rookie has almost 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. Kasicki, nine TDs as well. Will Fuller outperformed Jalen Waddell on fewer catches, so that's interesting. Show me superstar dev. Star. Ugh. It's not bad, right? But it, you know... A little bit lackluster, a little bit anticlimactic there, in my opinion. He might get upgraded to Superstar, so that might be all well and good. Anyway, and then defensively, Jerome Baker had 124 tackles. Parson as a rookie, 106, 7 for loss, 1.5 sacks and 2 picks. Really good year. Christian Wilkins, 12 tackles for loss. Emmanuel Agba, 12.5 sacks. As did Jalen Phillips. Greg Birch, at, he's at playing outside linebacker. It's not his game. It's not his game. He's got to get on the D-line. So that might happen at some point. And then interception, six for Xavier Howard. Parson, Baker, Holland, all with two as well. What are the odds we actually beat the Browns in the playoffs? I feel slim to none. But we'll see if we get lucky. The Browns are so good in Sim usually. And yeah, we lost because of my negative attitude, I'm sure. We lose 28-21. to 21. Season three, we don't end up getting even to the divisional round, but we did make the playoffs for the first time, won 11 games, won the division by a lot. So we're moving in the right direction. The team's improving. I mean, this rebuild was just basically all about just letting the team upgrade itself, basically. So it's not there yet, but we are close. 2023 season recap. The Panthers are so good in simulation. They win their first Super Bowl over the Steelers. Christian McCaffrey wins MVP. TJ Watt wins Defensive Player of the Year. Gary Sims, the Saints quarterback, won Rookie of the Year uh, offensively. And then defensively, Tremaine Herring of the Texans. Texans winning something. Madden is so unrealistic. Dante Hightower down to 79. We're going to let him walk and the rest of these guys as well. We have money. 
We can get a big time player or two in free agency if we want. So let's do that. Laramie Tunsil. <laughs> Should we bring him back to Miami? I don't think on this occasion. He's definitely good, but not going to happen. Nah. Marcus Bolden, by the way, upgraded to superstar. Yeah, you lead the league in receiving yards or touchdowns. It's going to happen. Do I bring Dante Hightower back? I do need another off-the-ball linebacker. He's going to be cheap. So I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Dante. I'll give you a one-year deal again to re-sign with the Dolphins, and we will try and draft your replacement. Hopefully no hard feelings. AJ Epinez is here. Superstar dev for the 25-year-old. It's pretty good. So he brought back two former Dolphins. I mean, Dante Hightower, I guess, never was not a former, or never not a Dolphin. He tested free agency, but he's back. Miles Gaskin's back as well. Good backup running back to have. Low stakes. But it's draft time. I'm trying to focus on what we need. I'm a little bit in between with Emmanuel Agba and what to do with my defensive line, I guess, in general. If we check out the team, I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Going into the 2024 draft, I like our offense. I really do. We're just waiting for this O-line to develop. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. They are improving. And then defensively, though, we're in kind of a weird in-between. Greg Birch is going to slide down and play defensive end probably sooner rather than later. But then it's like, what do I do with Emmanuel Agba? I could move him to D-tackle. He's a rush D-tackle anyway. His block shedding is really not too bad. 275 pounds. Maybe a little undersized, but... I mean, definitely. But to get Greg Birch in there, I think would be worth it. Could use another off-ball guy to replace Greg Birch. I mean, we could have... I don't know. We could have another, like, edge rusher there, I guess. Birch has done a fine job in that role. But I think getting him on the line every play is going to do a lot for our team. Again, we're just kind of in a weird in-between. Byron Jones is regressing pretty heavy now that he's 31. He's down to an 85 overall. Picking at number 18 overall, I think even though we're in a 3-4, we need to build 4-3 personnel. That's just how it goes. I need an off-the-ball linebacker. Hopefully, there's at least one or two good ones. That'll make things really easy for me. DeMar Howell's okay. A little slow, maybe. At number 18 overall, I'm kind of conflicted. I feel like I say that at the start of every draft. DeMar Howell is still available. Like, he's good. A little slow again, but good. Do I trade this pick for an established linebacker? That's my conundrum at the moment. This is the closest I've ever seen. Oh, because it's going to put us over the salary cap. Did the Chargers just recently sign him? Well, we could do it first for Kenneth Murray, but we'd have to take on some of their salary cap, so that's probably not going to happen. Okay, monster blockbuster trade here. Monster trade. Number 18, number 36, and a second round pick next year for Darius Leonard. He is 29 now, but I think this... Uh, Obviously makes our team better right now. And I really think we're on the verge of competing for a championship. Darius Leonard maybe helps us go over the top. I'm going to have the CPU handle the rest of the draft. We got the best draft pick you can get, which is Darius Leonard. So uh, I think it was important. I moved Greg Birch down to left end. Moved Emmanuel Agba over to D-tackle. It's just how the defense is going to shape up and work out the best, I think. So... These were things that I felt needed to happen. Let's see the draft recap, though. Let's see what type of beast I missed out on. Any actual studs here? Man, the CPU did it. One heck of a job drafting. A couple 60 overalls in there. That's nice. Wow. Giants took another running back in the top five. As a Giants fan, that's sick, dude. Quentin Best, though, is an 83 overall. So if ever there was a time to take a running back, <laughs> this was the time, I guess. Tyler Blake, pretty good. Where is the linebacker I had considered? He is right there. 75 overall. Does have star, better development. He's no Darius Leonard. Show me Superstar X Factor just to dig the knife in and drive it, twist it. Superstar. Oh, Lord. Okay. It stings a little bit, but also it doesn't because I have Darius Leonard. Does that make sense? Also, did a, uh, an interview question. 
And I said Javon Holland has improved in zone coverage, and the game is like, you're right. Plus five zone coverage for Javon Holland. That's cool. That actually probably really impacts him. Plus five zone coverage is big for a safety. Oh, we got Matt LeBlanc. We got Joey from Friends. It, his name literally is Matt LeBlanc. Uh, cue the laugh track, because that's hilarious, dude. I love the laugh track in Friends, honestly, because as an idiot myself, it's really helpful to know when to laugh. Because like, oh, that's a joke. I mean, I'm a moron. 90 zone coverage, though, for Javon Holland. That's no joke. That's really, really good. Birch is an 86 overall left end. Team is starting to look really nice. We still have Dante Hightower. He's not going to play that big of an impact, though. Agba and Wilkins up the middle. You want Dante Hightower to be a rush in? No. It's going to be Birch and Jalen Phillips. Please. Three and four. Three and four at the midseason mark. You got to be joking. You got to be joking me. That's actually not good. I don't know if you guys knew that. Not good. Three and four. Don't want to be three and four. Want to be better than that. Xavier Howard, Jalen Waddle, free agents. Byron Jones, Javon Holland, Jerome Baker. I mean, a lot of guys in there. A lot of guys. Oh, we also have a ton of money. Okay, Howard back for three years actually works for me. And it doesn't work for him. Salary needs improvement. Your play needs improvement. So Liam Eikenberg, not going to bring back. Dante Hightower, not going to bring back. Emmanuel Agba's 30 now. Maybe. Yeah, one year deal. That sounds about right for me. And Emmanuel Agba's back for next year. Will Fuller is another one where I'm just kind of on the fence. He's going to want some more money and a longer contract. I don't want to give him any of that. I just don't. So we got Jalen Phillips back, got Jerome Baker, got uh, Javon Holland, got Jalen Waddle. Byron Jones, I haven't done anything with yet. He's pretty cheap, but he's also, he's regressing. He'll be like an 80 overall in three years. All right, fine. We actually made the playoffs. Won the division at 10 and 7. Not particularly impressive, honestly. Do we have any rookies with dev traits? I don't think so, but let's just see how the team's developing here. I mean, Godwin's up to a 93. Bolden's up to a 91. These are good things. And then defensively, yeah, the team's just improving. Holland almost a 90. Birch over a 90. Phillips almost a 90. Oh, okay, Tua. 4,700 yards and 44 touchdowns. That's a career high. Byron Godwin finally playing well. 1,000 yards, 13 TDs, almost 4.5 yards per carry. That's nice. Receiving. Marcus Bolden is a crackhead. But in a good way, in the best possible way. <laughs> uh, about 1,600 yards, a little over that, and 19 touchdowns. Jalen Waddle, eight touchdowns, about 1,000 yards. I got to put him back in the slot, and he's going to tear up the league. And that's what I'm going to do next year. I just wanted Bolden to get Superstar X Factor, just to have two of them, because that's pretty sick. Tackles for loss, uh, or tackles, Jerome Baker has 137 for loss. He had eight. Christian Wilkins leads with 22, though. And look at this. Greg Birch moving down to defensive end. 18 sacks with his 97 finesse moves. 13 and a half for Jalen Phillips. Nine and a half for Agba. Four and a half for Christian Wilkins. Four interceptions for Darius Leonard, actually, led the team. Three for both Nick Needham and Noah Igbenogany. I'm not really sure how both of them are seeing the field so much. You know, sneak on, get a pick every once in a while. That's okay. Nick Chubb wins MVP. As you can see in the bottom right, Greg Birch led the NFL in sacks. So... He's probably going up to Superstar Dev. And we'll see if we can beat the Titans in the wild card. Survey says, yes, 31-27. Actually, let me put Jalen Waddle back in the slot. Because I think he's a little bit more dangerous than my current slot guy, which is Marcus Bolden. Who's great, don't get me wrong. But he's no Jalen Waddle. Do we beat the Colts? We don't. 45-20, got smashed. I'm still wondering, I don't know, we were... We were interesting this year. <laughs> like, we were good. Like, seventh in total points per game and sixth in total points per game allowed. Allowed a lot of rushing, or excuse me, allowed a lot of passing yards. It didn't have a lot of rushing yards. But overall, our offense and defense were both good. So I'm actually pretty comfortable with where things are. That's fine. We're going to another offseason. I think this is shaping up to be the final year just because the team's going to be pretty good. Obviously, I think we're gonna re we're really gonna compete 
for a Super Bowl this season, I think. I think we really are. We're getting there. I think this is actually the season where it's going to happen. And you can see, yeah. Oh, did Tua go up to Superstar X Factor? Tell me he did. Tell me Tua got Superstar X Factor. Tell me. Tua, Superstar X Factor. It's Tua time. He won quarterback of the year. Tua Tungavailoa. Love that. Greg Birch is going to be Superstar. Yep. I like that. I like the performance-based upgrades, and you like you know why they did what they did. NFL Sacks Leader, D Lineman of the Year, and Superstar Dev. That's big. Do I do Run Stopper for him because the CPU is not going to upgrade that by themselves? Yeah. Let's do Run Stopper. That should get his Block Shed up. Hopefully, even Power Moves as well would be nice. But Block Shed plus two, and we're going to give him Edge Threat because I think Edge Threat is. Really pretty good. And then Marcus Bolden did get Superstar X Factor. That's why I put him in the slot, getting most of the targets. He won Receiver of the Year. So that was a no-brainer. Season recap, Chiefs won their fourth Super Bowl. Nick Chubb won MVP. Kamara, Offensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. And then Chad Barrett and Marcus Harold were the Rookies of the Year for the Falcons and Raiders. Do we need to re-sign anybody? I don't... Oh. Yes. Not Will Fuller, though. He's down to a 79. Do need to replace him. Doesn't have to be anybody super expensive, but Xavier Howard, I do want back. He said he wants more money. He's 32. He is regressing. How about a two-year deal? How about a two-year deal? He's back. I would have been cool franchise tagging him as well. Would have been like three million more per year, something like that. But it doesn't make too much of a difference. We're just going to have an extra year. DeAndre Hopkins is here. Michael Thomas is here. What do I want to do? What do I really need? We could really boost our offensive line. It might be worth it at this point just to get a guy like Teron Armstead on a rental. Ooh, Jalen Phillips got superstar dev, by the way. Just noticed that. We got Teron Armstead and also another player in the Jalen Waddle draft class. <laughs> that's, just, that's just what I'm going to call it in the 2021 class. Elijah Moore didn't really develop much with the Jets. Don't blame him, but we're going to steal him. He's an 81 overall. He's only 25 years old. Is going to be a really good third option. Because our two top receivers are sick. Like Jalen Waddle is a 93 overall. As I mentioned, he'll be a 99 by the end of this thing. Teron Armstead, for a year or two, he's an upgrade over Austin Jackson, who still is going to get better on the bench. And our offensive line just takes a big boost with Teron Armstead on the blind side. Not even on the blind side. Two is a lefty. Just stick to calling it left tackle, Bengal. Don't overcomplicate things. Why did Jalen Phillips get upgraded, by the way? Any reason? Just he just felt like it? I mean, that's good enough for me. I don't even think it shows if guys make the Pro Bowl anymore. That might be a bug I have to report. Uh, it says Pro Bowl appearance. I guess he made the Pro Bowl, but it didn't show up. And you figured he would have made it this year with... No, he had three and a half sacks in the divisional game. Go off, Jalen. But he had 13 and a half sacks. Figured he would have made it this year. 17 tackles for loss. It was a great year. But it just didn't show that he made the Pro Bowl for some reason. So it shows it in the wild card week. That can't be where it's intended to be. There's no way, right? You have a Pro Bowl appearance in wild card week. Well, there you go. But that's a little weird. We're going to give him extra credit, I think I like. And... Edge Threat. Edge Threat's just really good. We pick at number 25 in the draft, and what do we need? Is it still just a linebacker? It's been a linebacker the entire video. O-line, great. Offense in general is actually awesome. It really is really good. 91 offense, 88 defense. It's really just a linebacker. Right outside linebacker, we'll get anybody to fill that role. But other than that, the team's great. Maybe a safety instead of Byron Jones, but he's still good. Outside linebacker is still, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the biggest need on our team. It's been the biggest need for four seasons, maybe. 6-4-2-0-2. Jermaine Allen almost looking like a, a linebacker. Not quite with the, uh, the weight there, but Mike Harris is really good. That's the one, though. His last name's Money. Darvion Money. Ran 4-4-4. Earned that money. He's going first round, and he looks really good. I'm taking Darvion Money 
no matter what. You guys remember, I talked about draft day earlier with Kevin Costner. Vontae Mack, no, no matter what. We're taking a linebacker. Darvey on money, no matter what. And then Kasim Ryans. Might have to trade up to get it. Might have to trade up to get Darvey on money, too. But I'm doing it. There are a few good running backs in this class. Seven first-round guys. Oh, I have to trade into the top five to get Darvey on money. You gotta be joking me. You gotta be kidding me. Mike Harris was an 82 overall. Yeah, he looked pretty good. I might have to trade up to number three. Jump the Jets. Trading a lot to make this happen, but it, his name is Money, dude. I have to. And he's also, he looks really good. Trading number 25, my first round pick next year, which is hopefully number 32 when we win the Super Bowl. And then a fourth round pick this year for number three. We're moving up a lot, and we're moving up a lot for a linebacker. And he's not even a pass rusher. Kind of insane. But Darvion Money, welcome to the team. Ranked number eight, took him at number three. I had to go up and get him. Not bad about it. 76 overall. He's got 92 speed. <laughs> Star better development. Not really much of a cover guy. Decent power and finesse moves for a middle linebacker. So he's going to make the transition to right outside linebacker perfectly. He fits our scheme so well. All right, swapping twos with the Lions and trading a fifth and a sixth to get the 37th overall pick, which is the top of the second round, or just about. And with that pick, we're going to get the guy that I was talking about a little bit earlier. I think he was a baller. Skipped the combine. Said, hey, Roger could... Oh, perfect. Skip the combine merch. I think it's still in the store. I think it still have it. Link is in the description. Yeah, skip the combine. Said, hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. I'm not doing your damn combine. Looks solid. Kasim Ryans, welcome to the team. Number 15 in the draft, segment 37. Star, better development, only 21 years old. 84 speed, pretty well-rounded. Not particularly great in any one area, but well-rounded. Hopefully a good development trait too. And that's going to do it for the draft. Mike Harris. He's got a real big cornerback name. Also like Mike Haynes. Pretty good corner for the Raiders back in the day. This is Mike Harris. Not quite the same, I guess. But yeah, really good. Really well-rounded. Morale's down because he went to the Raiders. I don't blame you. I'm sorry about that, buddy. But 80-man, 80 81 zone. Oh, accidentally uh, simmed to week 10. We're 7-2, and two, so it's working out. Oh, and a breakout player. Oh, perfect timing. Blessing in disguise. Who's, who's even talking? Is this my third receiver? Is this Elijah Moore? Can Elijah Moore stats he's not going to get? Well, if he's in the slot, he actually might. So you know what? We'll simulate against the Jets. His old team, they suck. And Elijah Moore, we lose 28-24. He's not getting anything. There's no way. Oh, okay. He did it. He's got superstar development now. Okay. All right, Elijah. Like, Kasim Ryans was not supposed to start at outside linebacker. I really didn't set up the team. Darvion Money was supposed to. Instead, he's not even playing. Okay, free agents. I mean, I didn't mean to simulate to this point, but here we are. We actually don't have that many of them, and we should have the money to bring these guys back fairly easily. Byron Godwin is a 95 overall now, is not too expensive. Bobby Jackson, shockingly, isn't the highest overall player in his draft class. Like, that's wild. Super shocked about that, but he is also back. Greg Birch has been incredible for us. He will sign a long-term extension. And Greg Birch is back long-term. Chad Hart's back as well. We got our center. Not sure about Agba. Not sure about Teron Armstead. We really don't need him. We really don't need him. Austin Jackson should be good enough at the end of the year to take over. But team is set up the way I want. Yeah, it is. We're 7-3, though. I mean, kind of a weird check-in, weird season so far. Playoff time, 12-5. and five. Our best season so far, even if not insane. Tua, what a year. What a year. 5,300 yards, 45 touchdowns. Really... Really good. Only nine interceptions rushing. Byron Godwin, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, four and a half per carry. Receiving Elijah Moore, about 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns. Jayla Waddle, 1,200 yards, seven TDs. Mike Kosicki was out here. Byron Godwin had more yards and touchdowns receiving than Marcus Bolden. That's something. Defensively, Jerome Baker balled out. Tackles for loss. Greg Birch had 20. Jalen Phillips at 14 sacks, 11 for Birch, 11 for Agba, 8 for Wilkins. 
Interceptions, five for Noah Igbenogany. Where did our defense rank? That's what I want to know. First, well, I'll be. How do we only go 12 and five then? How do we only go 12 and five? You better beat the Browns. We're 92 overall. You better beat the Browns. 24 to 10. And we got the Ravens in our way. Let's beat them. One game for the conference championship, which is one game from the Super Bowl, and we lose. Oh my God, dude. Stop losing. Our team is sick. Stop losing. All right, this is going to be the final year. We're going into 2026, dude. We better start turning it around. Ravens won the Super Bowl. Christian McCaffrey won another MVP. Aaron Donald won another Defensive Player of the Year. And the Panthers and Steelers have the Rookies of the Year on both sides of the ball. And what do I want to do here? We don't really have anyone to re-sign except for maybe Teron Armstead. And as I mentioned previously, I don't really feel like we need him. Like, he's good. He's definitely good. What is he down to now? He's still an 88 overall. Has regression not hit, or did he just shake it off? No, he's down to an 86. Some of that's morale. So Austin Jackson, maybe he's going to take over. Godwin's up to a 99 with morale. And then defensively, oh, money's got superstar dev. Did he get upgraded to it, or did he have it? He had it. Darvey on money. We made the right move. We made the right move. If Greg Birch wasn't Superstar X Factor already, he is now. <laughs> I'm shocked Jalen Phillips actually didn't get the upgrade and Greg Birch did. Birch got outplayed a little bit in the pass rushing department. But Xavier Howard's regressing a bit. Team's still looking really, really good and should be even better. Ryan's with Star Dev. That's not too bad for a backup. Team's looking nasty. We don't really need anything. I feel like free agency is obsolete for us. And the draft doesn't matter. We have money, but there's no one to get. And I don't think there's anyone to draft. Anything here in round three for me? Tyree Hill. It's not Tyreek Hill. It's close. All right, draft class is kind of fitting because I actually got to take a huge shit right now. Uh, and that's what the draft class is. So I'm going to simulate to the end of the draft. And I'll be back in probably... Let's be real. It's going to be like 20 minutes. This is going to be ugly. I lost my glasses. Uh, I don't know what happened. My eyes are at risk for game-changing detrimental blue light. All right, I know everyone was on the edge of their seat. They have been located. And I honestly don't think we need to change anything. We had the number one overall offense. Ah, it's, you suck. Number one overall offense and defense last year. We just didn't win. Elijah Moore, by the way, is up to Superstar X-Factor. What an unbelievable free agent signing this was. We got him for nothing. Look at his contract. He's not getting paid really anything. He's probably going to end up being like a 90 overall or something close. If Tua takes a jump, we're going to be really, really good this year. It's pretty much where we are in that. Defensively, ooh, CPU drafted... A, a Texas player, first of all, big win. Star or better development? It's probably star. Let's be real. But the team is really, really good. Hopefully they have what it takes. Team's really, really good. You've seen the offense. Now, I'm setting the team up in an interesting way. I like Kasim Ryans, but how am I going to play him? Well, Jalen Phillips is my rush T tackle. So he's the primary defensive end. But I think we're going to play him as a rush D tackle in order to get Ryan's playing. And also, like, he's so much better than Raekwon Davis. It's not even funny. I feel like if I've called him Raekwon McMillan, I'm going to be really sad at some point. But Raekwon Davis, team's great. Let's see what they're capable of. I'll see you at the midseason mark. Actually, no. Actually... Yeah, playoff time. 11-6, and six, made the playoffs. I don't know. I feel like our performance has somehow been lackluster. I mean, obviously, we haven't made the conference championship yet. Seventh best offense. Two had 5,100 yards, 39 TDs to nine picks. Rushing, Byron Godwin had 1,111 yards, 16 TDs. Receiving, Jalen Waddell went for over 2,000 yards. That's pretty good. 17 touchdowns. Kasicki was good. Marcus Bolden really didn't have to do much because Jalen Waddell had 2,000 yards. 
Defensively, Jerome Baker had a pretty good year. Greg Birch had 15 sacks. Look at Jalen Phillips. 19 and a half sacks. 99 for that move. Just unfair. Unfair. Kasim Ryan, seven and a half, six and a half for Wilkins. Interception, six for Bobby Jackson, playing well. I feel like our defense had to be really good. The numbers look really good, so I'm expecting big things here. And fifth best defense. We should be winning more games than we're winning, though. I don't know why we haven't been more effective. Jalen Waddle led the league in touchdowns and had the most yards by 300. It's pretty good. Like to see that. Brian Burns had 27 sacks. <laughs> also pretty good. Bobby Jackson tied for most interceptions. Very interesting year. But we should be able to beat the Steelers. They're just not as good as we are. And we do. 31-28. I'm going into Super Sim here in the Divisional. Because it doesn't make sense where we're not performing as well as we should be. I don't want to just have this rebuild end with a super sim loss in the divisional. So we're going to watch this one and jump in if we have to. We are way better than them, but I know for a lot of you guys that the success of the rebuild determines or is determined by how many games we actually win in a bad sim uh, simulation engine. So we're going to try and make it happen. 3 nothing, make it 10 nothing, make it 13 nothing early. Hopefully you don't collapse 20 to nothing. Browns finally get on the board of the TD. Need our offense to just stay strong. 28 to 7. Doesn't really matter about the defense if we score every single possession, right? 35-21. 35-28. Please score. Okay, that, that's fine. We only end up winning by a touchdown. 35-20. Was it 27 or 28? 35-28, yep. Yeah. So by a touchdown. But we did get the win. We're going to the conference championship. It's the furthest we've made it in this rebuild so far and it's a long time coming the 15 and 2 baltimore ravens is our opposition here in the conference championship i want to see what the ravens playbooks are are they still in their actual playbooks like baltimore baltimore let's see here i was looking for baltimore i need the ravens here yep it's just baltimore it's interesting. Up 10 nothing early. Make it 13 nothing. Defense is really holding the Ravens out of the end zone so far. But they finally get their first touchdown. 16-7. to The Ravens offense just has not showed up. And a couple big stops there. But it's 22 all all of a sudden. Oh my goodness. Hold on. And we're playing defense. Oh, we're going to lose the game in, in devastating fashion, I'm sure. Huge gains. I mean, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course, dude. Should probably call a timeout pretty soon. We need a fumble. Oh, give me a fumble there. I got to call a timeout now. Third and 12. How awesome would a turnover be right now? Just going to run the ball. Oh, they're going to get the first too. Rip the ball out. You should have let him score, you idiot. All right, I'm running field goal block. It's to force the Ravens to pass. It's our only chance. They could just kick a field goal and end the game, you know? Pick it off. It works like a charm. Byron Jones. Give me a block. Give me a block. Byron Jones with a game-saving interception. 200 IQ play. Field goal block. They audible out of the run. They throw it. And Lamar Jackson throws a goal line. Red zone interception. And we have a chance to actually win the game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Get it there, Tua. Get it there. Mike Kosicki gets out of bounds. Huge first. We got to look for Victor Bolden here. Rolling out. Set in the feet. Wide open to Bolden. Timeout. It's going to be tough. We're going to get iced. I'm so bad at kicking field goals while iced. Because it doesn't show you where it's going. It's just a guessing game. So they're going to ice me. So it's got to be a little bit to the left. But look at this. Watch, watch it when it's iced. Oh, hold on. I actually saw it that time. A little bit of wind to the left. Come on, Jason. You got to drill this. Kick is up. Down the middle. Good. We're going to take the lead here with three seconds to play. Ice in my veins. Three seconds away from making the Super Bowl. Trying to run it back. Tackled. Devin Duvernay goes down. Game over. Dolphins back to the Super Bowl. Now, I believe this would be the first time winning the Super Bowl since the undefeated 1972 Dolphins. 
did Dan Marino ever make a Super Bowl? You had to figure that he did. But I, I definitely can't, couldn't tell you the year. I don't know it. Okay, the Dolphins' Super Bowl actually came... Well, their second one came the year after their undefeated season. They won in 1974. Or 1973-1974. That's why I said a year after. But yeah, it was the 1973 season. So 72 and 73. So we got the Panthers in the Super Bowl. But what have they made? Super Bowl appearances. Okay, so they made it in 1984 and 1982. Lost to the Niners and lost to the Redskins at the time. Before they made the huge change to Washington football team. But let's get one final look at the team. This is looking like it's going to end in a Super Bowl win. I hope, well, we're playing the Panthers, so maybe not. But this is your final team. Jalen Waddle's a 99 overall. Godwin's a 99 overall. Waddle can't run a short route, but everything else looks pretty good. Two at a 95. Offensive line looking pretty good. And then defensively. Greg Birch, Superstar X-Factor. McKinney, we still don't know. Jackson's a 98. Javon Holland's a 93. Jalen Phillips is a 93. We're looking good. But let's cap this off. Let's win it all. Let's beat the Panthers. They're such a powerhouse in simulation. They have Christian McCaffrey and Brian Burns. This is going to be very tough. Up 3-0 to start the game. Not the worst start in the world. It would be nice to be more than that, but we are actually going to take the lead. 10-7. 10-10 now as we approach the end of the first half. 13-10. And make it 16-10 now into the second half. Carolina gets a touchdown, makes it 17-16. We retake the lead. 22-17. Carolina up 25-22. We need to stop. We need to stop. It's just punting back and forth. And we get into the end zone. No, we kick a field goal. 25-25. We were on the goal line. Didn't come away with a touchdown there. And oh my goodness. Are they going to score here? They score a touchdown. All right. A minute and 16 seconds. I'm jumping in. I am... Ooh. Hold on. We're going deep here. Bolden has a step. Bolden. Touchdown. Marcus Bolden TD. 39 seconds remain. The plan was really never to go to him. But he had a step, and then there was never any other option. We are going for two. After the way that our team has played in simulation so far, just don't trust him. We run the ball here. Godwin up the middle. Godwin, two-point conversion successful. We take a 33-32 lead with 39 seconds to go. Xavier Howard with an interception, and that should ice it. Game over, 36-32. The Miami Dolphins have finally won it. The Super Bowl. For the first time since 1973, we've won it all. Not with Dan Marino, but Tua Tungavailoa as a starting quarterback. And, of course, some other names you've hopefully learned to, to, uh, to love. Jalen Waddle, Marcus Bolden, Byron Godwin. And then on defense, you know, a number of different players made this happen. We traded for Darius Leonard. That happened. But this is why you play the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Jalen Phillips up there. Transfers to the U. Formerly retired from football after enough concussions at UCLA. Transfers to Miami. Becomes a first round pick of the Miami Dolphins. And now has won a Super Bowl with that same team. Tua Hoist Lombardi. That's going to do it for the video though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for liking, commenting, hitting the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter. I'm about to stream twitch.tv slash Bengal as I record this, but who knows if I'll be live when you actually see the video. But the link is in the description. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.